No, mankind and and uh, and animals and uh, things that non-living organisms, living organisms, everything that live and doesn't live, everything that is created, the Prophet وسلم, is a mercy to them. Don't be selfish. Not only, don't you think only that you are the people of Muslims only, are the people that need Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. No, no. Everybody in this world. Everybody. Everybody needs the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even those who don't know him, they need him. Even those who don't, not, not, not only that, not only you love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, even those who don't know him, they love him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Believe me. Those who don't know him, they still love him, sallallahu alayhi wa So now you say, how come? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa what did he bring? What did he bring with him? He brought Iman. Believe. What else he brought? Justice and equality. Sorry? All these things. What do people in the world need? They look for freedom. They look for Iman. They look for justice. They look for equality. Everybody actually, the end result of what peoples and what nations struggle is the beginning of what the Prophet ﷺ brought. The end result of the struggle of people is what the Prophet ﷺ began to give people. Iman, just, fry uh, I said fry I in German. Freedom uh, and peace. All these things the Prophet ﷺ brought. That's, that's why even those who don't know him, you go into any other country, in any other nation, and anywhere, even here, and you say, here, I come with this. Don't say the name of the Prophet. Some people are misguided still about that. But tell them, I come, I bring Iman, I bring freedom for everybody, I bring social justice, I bring equality to you, I bring civil rights, and look how everybody's going to surround you. Everybody wants to follow you. That's the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The problem, dear brothers, is not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the problem is not Islam. The problem is those who represent Islam, like myself. That's the problem. That's the problem. We have our names, big names like that. And we have the looks. And we have all these things. But do we really have what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with? That's the point. That's the point. Many people, they become... 20, 30, 25, 35 years old, and they still can't recite the Fatiha correctly. The Fatiha. Seven ayahs only. They still can't recite it. Big mustache. Big beard. Amama, some people even. Not even the Fatiha. Where is the love for the Prophet? The love for the Prophet is not about words, dear brothers and sisters. It's not about talk, and it's not about looks, and it's not about big bodies, it's not about small bodies, it's not about businesses, it's not about uh, power, it's not about money, it's not about position. It's about following him. This is the point. If you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, say if you really love Allah, then follow the Prophet, and follow me, then Allah would love you. If you're true, if you have a claim, and that claim is true, but if you're all talk, no action, then what's, what's the difference between what some Muslims do and what other nations did before? We didn't go anywhere. That's the difference. So talk is cheap. But act is what counts. Let's go back to the ayah. Ibrahim alayhi salam. That's the ayah we started with. It's unbelievable how some people go and pay for their sons. You see, he puts his son, I have to go back to this because it really irritates me. He puts his son, oh, well, I'm going to send him to Northwestern University. Or I'm going to send him to Johns Hopkins. Or I'm going to send him to Emory. Or I'm going to send him to Mercer. Or I'm going to give him a uh, French tutor. How about maybe a Quranic tutor? How about we try that? How about instead of spending 15 hours a day watching TV, maybe we can spend five minutes a day learning five eyes of the Quran. You and your family. How about success for the family? It's very tangible, but we just have to start touching these things. Talk is very cheap and everybody can talk. And everyone, it, like I said the other time, in engineering, if you want to be an engineer, you have to attend engineering school. But when it comes to Islam, SubhanAllah, everybody immediately <coughs> gives himself the authority not only to make opinions, to make judgments. 
beyond opinions, make judgments. You are affected by this. You are. What, do you know how to recite the Fatiha correctly? Do we know the differences between the Sunan of Wudu and the Fara'ah of Wudu and the invalidators of, of Wudu, the Waqat Wudu? Do we know them? Basic 101? There's a problem. Let's go back to Ibrahim alayhi salam. <clears throat> but we love to talk about stories. I I'll keep, going, I'll keep going back, right? Because the situation in Muslim Muslimuna is sad. Because people love to talk about fairy tales. And you would like me to take you and put you back 1400 years ago and relive the victorious times and the enjoyable times. But it's time to wake up and see reality. It's enough going back to fairy tales that are either supported or not even have any support because with fairy tales we're very creative. But it's time to go back to substance now. There's a difference, dear brothers and sisters, between substance and suspicion, between, between fact and fiction. And we can decide, you can decide, or people can decide to live in fiction for as long as they want. But one day, and I guarantee that for me and for everybody, we will wake up when death comes. And that is too late then. Maybe we should go back to facts. Maybe you should start teaching yourself for Islam and Quran. Maybe you should take that time and start teaching your son that you're responsible for. And your daughter that you're responsible. And, and your wife that you're responsible for. Maybe take that time instead of cooking meal for them. Maybe say, I'm going to cook you a spiritual meal now. Let's sit here and recite the Fatiha for five, for five minutes. Think about this. We have to take initiative. And initiative comes from me and you. It's very easy to blame the rulers. It's very easy to, to blame the Muslim countries. It's very easy to blame the Muslim governments. And we're going to do that anyway. We're going to do that anyway. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim, who is Ibrahim? Really, the biography of, of Ibrahim takes lots and lots of time. Please come forward, barakallahu alaykum, so people can sit in the back. Come forward as much as you can. <laughs> Ibrahim alayhi salam was the hero of Tawheed. Battle of Tawheed for Quran. Anytime you hear about Ibrahim and you hear about Tawheed, remember that Ibrahim is the hero of Tawheed. If the star of Tawheed. Huh? And Ibrahim was given so many tests and was, uh, has gone through so many things. As you all know, you, they tried to kill him first after he destroyed one of the idols and, and then they tried to put him in the fire. We talked about that the other time, right? We don't have time right now to cover all these things. He was put through so many things, through so many tests, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Abu al-Anbiya, the father of the prophets. Ibrahim this is one of the worst in the tafsir of the ayah, and some of some of the some scholars, they said this was one of the hardest tests. Throwing in the fire after they burned the fire for six months, and put it like that. When they threw Ibrahim Islam in the fire, eyes on the way going after takeoff, before landing, Ibrahim Islam was smiling. Jibreel came to him, said, "Ya Ibrahim, anything that you want to say." Do you have any last wish? Huh? Before, you know, they give people before they die last wish? What last meal? What do you want? Should I tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything on your behalf? What was the answer of Ibrahim? He said, his knowledge in my case <coughs> suffices me from asking him for anything. He knows. Why should I ask him? I'm not going to tell you anything. He knows. Huh? Because deep iman, iman is saying that if I'm going to go, I'm going to go, period. But that's not, that was not the biggest test yet. Here it is. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعْرِ The ayah of the Qur'an says, فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ السَّعْرِ When Ibrahim and Ismail, when Ismail became a little bit a youngster. You know how if you have a son, may Allah protect you and your sons and your daughters and your family, inshaAllah. If you have a son or you have a daughter, if you have a son, how much hard you work, how hard you work to make him grow and to follow the right way, and how much effort you put, huh? your own blood, you would probably take a bullet for him, 
You put anything for him. You do anything to, to make him successful. To avoid the pitfalls that you fell into, you would try to do anything for him. Obvious. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعْهُ السَّعِيدِ The Quran mentions, which means, when Ismail now became to be in that age of being with his father. When do you people become with their father, with their father, going with their father and coming with their father? When they grow up a little bit, they start understanding. That's when you see yourself right in front of you growing. And you say, Allah. You see your extension. It's really out of selfishness. If you ask, if you ask philosophers or psych psychiatrists, they say it's out of selfishness. But let's not talk about psychiatrists. Here we're talking about the words of Allah. So, this is what they do. 